Hey guys, this is Bob Trade Genius. Got my good friend Phil here. We told you yesterday that uh, we're going to probably get a violent dead cat bounce. It's beginning. Today we got even a better signal for you. Is the low end short term? Stay tuned, we'll explain all. Trade Genius. Okay, Phil, you know, Friday down, Monday down, VIX at 60, absolutely turnaround Tuesday. We got it today. We're not out of the woods yet, but we did get a signal that tells us that we could see the path. Please explain to our listeners. Yeah, so... I mean, in terms of what's going on, Asia's not done with with their turmoil that they're working out. You, what you saw today is a typical bear market bounce, actually, which is a dead cap bounce, and it's very vicious. I mean, Nikkei went up 10%. That's that's historically a very gigantic up day. Uh, that happened last night because there's sessions overnight. We probably were going to see red again. Again, uh, this isn't totally done yet, so it gets confusing because you see such large moves and you think, oh, coast is clear, but really it's not. What I want to do is go look at the yield curve chart here. Now, we've shown this a number of times, but it's time to revisit it. Now, below you have the stock market in that lower pane, and we overlaid kind of what you would expect to see when we go into a move where the yield curve goes back to positive, and that's in the upper chart. That's That graph up there is the yield curve. So we've been inverted for a record long time. And that white line is basically where we go positive on the yield curve again, which is normally where the yield curve hangs out. And that's the two year versus the 10 year yields, right? So that yield curve has been inverted. Now we're gonna go back to into positive territory. We're almost there, the rate we're going, we'll see that this month. Why that's important is because when we go from zero to 0.6% 0 positive, which is my recession threshold for the yield curve after an inversion, is that a lot of times it's gonna be a positive window for the market. And this current market looks so much like 2007, Bob. And the reason why I say that is because something similar like what we just saw happen in 2007, the Nikkei crashed and it never recovered. And the S&P 500 went down with it, exactly like what we just saw. But then what happened was the S&P 500 bounced and the Nikkei didn't go with it. And the S&P 500 ended up making new all-time highs. And then the top was in and we were, you know, pain and suffering from that point on until the first quarter of, or second quarter of 2009. So the similarities are just really crazy here. And we also got, I don't have it here, but we also got in terms of a signal, in terms of volatility, we had a signal that fires off, very rare signal. You might see it once or twice a year and it always comes at extreme moves. And that's something that we saw yesterday or the day before and we're going to probably get a pretty strong bounce. It, but this signal is interesting because it means one of two things. We're either going to make a lower high, which means we're going to go into that area that we broke down from in the S&P 500, or we're going to break through that level. Okay, so I think on SPY, that's, uh, I don't remember exactly where it was, but it's somewhere in the 540s, like 540 to 544 on SPY, right? The, the S&P 500 ETF. If we break through that level, we're going to new all-time highs and we're going to get this blow-off move we've been talking about. Um, and because things have kind of progressed the way they have, we may not, you know, this may actually last, we were thinking August, September, this might actually go closer to the election here. And so it's very important now to watch what happens there. This is do or die, guys. This is really like for all the marbles. We talk about, you know, bear markets and things like that. And we've been saying brace for it, but this is really, I think, you know, the scenario is very clear now because of this um, volatility signal that we got that <clears throat> we're likely gonna see that bounce to those levels on SPY. What happens there? We have to watch very, very closely because that's gonna tell us exactly what's gonna happen over the next couple of months and whether or not we just saw the market top the other week, right uh, at the highs there. And that this is really all downhill from now. Hey everybody, it's Bob with Trade Genius. Usually I do fun ads, I talk about our service, but I wanna be serious with you for a second. We've been helping a lot of people trading for a long time. As you can see here, I wanna let them do the talking for me for a change. But most importantly, we wanna help you too. If you've not joined our service yet, come check us out, tradelikeagenius.com. Full service, you know, we have chat room, we have the algorithms for you, we give trades out every day, we educate you. So go to tradelikeagenius.com, check us out. What you get out of our service, is much, much more than what you put into it. And we'd like to see you in the room. Thanks for listening.
Yeah, I agree, Phil. You know what? There, there's two scenarios here. One is that we're just going to fly from here or we're going to chop for the next four to six weeks to the Fed meeting. And then and then we're going to fly from there. And so the vol people are saying that we're going to chop until September OPEX. The yen carry people say that we're going to probably chop until till 2025. And our scenario, looking at the election scenario, says that we should get some sort of major rally that ends sometime around the election. So I think it's really interesting that we will get a bounce for sure. And we will get another sell-off for sure. And what we have to watch now is if we don't make an all-time high, then we're going to roll into a recession. But if we do make an all-time high again, then we're resetting the calendar again, Phil, for another quarter out. So I'm still in the camp where, you know, I'm from Missouri on this one. And it all depends on how much liquidity they decide to pump in. I want to change direction real quick because I think Bitcoin has been really interesting to me, Phil, is that I think it's the only asset in the world that could tell the future. You know, it was telling us that a sell-off was coming about a month ago. And today's move was pretty strong. And then we found out liquidity was being pushed into the market. So I think we just watch the action on, on Bitcoin to kind of help us, guide us as to whether or not we're going we're gonna to pump again. Both SPY and Bitcoin held their weekly rangers, which are our big fib lines for us. So if those break, then we know Katie bar the door. But if they start breaking back up over its daily, you know, fib, fib lines, then we're going to keep driving higher. So I'm encouraged. Look, we're going to chop this week. My big trade between now and the September uh, Fed meeting is that I'm going to do very little swing trading, guys. So if you're a customer, we're just really going to be trading the volatility trades that kind of set up every day. And, and I think that's what we're going to be focused on. And then watching energy to case, you know, see something happens with Iran. Don't foreshadow it with some big money moving into into oil. So those are my two big watches right now, Phil. And then September Fed meeting is going to tell us whether or not that yield curve changes. And then that gives us a whole different scenario into 2025. So guys, trade with us. You know, uh, we looked at the pair trades again today. And uh, we're really pleased that we think the yield max people have figured it out on the ones that have been out. And I think it's going to give us great comfort in this environment where the markets are going to get pretty crazy. If Phil is right, this is a 2000-2008 analog, the market will, will become absolutely one day up, one day down kind of moves. And you're going to be you're, you're going to be on a vomit comet. And it's going to be nice to be able to own things that just doesn't care. And you're just going to extract yield out there. So come trade with us. We'll help you walk through it. We got some really cool indicators that we use to help guide you on the bias. And we'll share those trades as they come up. Thanks, Phil. You guys have a great day. See you tomorrow. Trade Genius.